बैठो बैठो नहीं चाहिए ये चाहिए कुछ चाहिए यहाँ तक आने में एक खबरी है मैडम प्लीज सेंड फीडबैक फॉर्म
Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Am I, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Dear participant, we will start of the day four of seventh day international faculty development program on mathematical modeling in multidisciplinary domain. And today we have a resource person, Dr. Jagdish Chand Banzal is an associate professor at South Asian University, New Delhi. Uh, I shared my screen, that's why I think uh, oh. you may have. Oh, yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Jagdish Chand Banzal is an associate professor at South Asian University, New Delhi, and visiting faculty at Maths and Computer Science, Liverpool Hope University, UK. 
Dr. Bansal has obtained his PhD in mathematics from IIT Roorkee. Before joining South Asian University, New Delhi, he has worked as an assistant, assistant professor at ABB Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management Gaulier and with Bilani. He, he is the series editor of the book series Algorithms for Intelligent Systems published by Stringer. He is the editor-in-chief of International Journal of Spam Intelligence published by Interscience. He is also an associate editor of IEEE Ace S published by IEEE Array published by Elsevier. He is the steering committee member and the general chair of the annual conference series SOC Pros. He is the general secretary of SOC Computing Research Society. His primary area of interest is swarm intelligence and nature-inspired optimization techniques. Recently, he proposed a fission fusion social structure-based optimization algorithm, spider monkey optimization, which is being applied to various problems from engineering domain. He has published more than 60 research papers in various international journals and conferences. He has supervised PhD thesis from ABB IITM Gaulier and South Asian University, New Delhi. He has also received gold medal at UG and PG levels. I welcome you, sir. Now, you. now you can just uh, go ahead with your presentation, sir. Thank you, sir. So, can anybody just confirm whether my um, slide is visible? Yes, sir. Your slide is visible, sir. Okay. So, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, uh, Professor Gita, for giving me the chance to interact with such a large number of audience. Uh, it is really uh, for academicians, uh, in a way, all this COVID-19 situation comes as a boon that uh, uh, from the comfort of home, uh, the people are interacting uh, throughout the world people so and uh, the professor Gita like people are uh, becoming the channel for all this help thank you so much for organizing these kind of big events and for the help of academics uh, today considering the uh, uh, of the workshop of the lecture series I plan to speak on uh, uh, same topic which few weeks before I spoke in a similar kind of workshop uh, organized by uh, uh, Udaipur people. So uh, here in this talk, I'll speak on <clears throat> swarm intelligence. Uh, I'm actually going to make my presentation full screen. So now onward, I will not be able to see the participants. So if you have any question, or any doubt just uh, unmute and can ask in between also uh, or you can just note down your questions your queries uh, for the end also i'm i'm okay with any case okay but uh, of course chat questions i will not be able to see because i'm 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 going to make my screen full screen okay uh, here in this talk uh, today i'll speak on in general, the nature-inspired optimization algorithm, the computational intelligence algorithm, and then particularly, I will start concentrating on swarm intelligence, which is a way of intelligently uh, problem solving. And then I will give you a slight introduction about spider monkey optimization algorithm, particle swarm optimization, artificial bee colony, and ant colony optimization algorithm. If the time will permit, I will speak something on these two algorithms also. Uh, just for the uh, sake of large audience, I'm I'm keeping all this introduction a generalized introduction. If you want to go uh, to for the implementation level of these algorithms, then you can uh, just uh, Google search my other video lectures. Uh, uh, I have already uploaded just in this pandemic uh, situation uh, during this period. I uploaded few video lectures on these algorithms. So you can just uh, Google and you'll find the lectures. And I'll also discuss uh, at the end some success stories, some successful applications of these algorithms, swarm intelligence algorithm, and most importantly, considering this 
uh, corona situation uh, we are working on uh, prediction using uh, swarm intelligence also of the covid-19 spread so i'll discuss that how i model this covid-19 spread that also i'll uh, share okay so to start with nature inspired algorithm swarm intelligence is actually a kind of uh, swarm intelligence is actually a kind of uh, nature inspired algorithm because in swarm intelligence the algorithms are not derived from mathematics mathematical formula actually we have the uh, broadly we can classify the optimization algorithm or in general the algorithms in two major categories the derived algorithm and the inspired algorithm may I request the participants if they have no question please mute uh, because there is a disturbance from the back side yeah thank you so much uh, so <clears throat> uh, broadly the algorithms are classified into two major uh, categories the inspired algorithms and the derived algorithms derived algorithms are those which are mathematically derived for which we have a certain mathematical background for example the newton raphson method it is mathematically derived from the taylor series expansion and and there is a mathematical guarantee also that there is a error upper bound obtained by the in the in the solution obtained by these algorithms but there is another category which is inspired algorithm nature inspired algorithm the algorithm has the background in nature there is no mathematical proof of the algorithm why the algorithm is working why this particular formula is written there is no mathematical justification for that but there is a justification comes from the nature that how the nature works so the natural phenomena tries to be simulated Uh, let me be very frank that uh, nature is so complex so difficult to uh, simulate that human beings uh, uh, cannot simulate the nature and therefore we call it not nature simulated algorithms we call it nature inspired algorithms so we took few few uh, properties of the nature and we develop our algorithms right so the good word is inspired algorithms not the simulation but few properties of the nature are try to simulate it or try to simulate in these equations or in these algorithms and therefore these algorithms are called nature inspired algorithms again the nature inspired algorithms can be broadly classified into two major uh, categories one is the evolutionary algorithm and one is the swarm intelligence algorithm there is another one more category which is artificial neural networks right but since artificial neural network algorithms are of different applications are of different type and therefore i'm i'm just concentrating on two major types evolutionary algorithms and the swarm intelligence algorithms in the swarm intelligence algorithms there is a population of individuals there are there are potential solutions which cooperate with each other in the evolutionary algorithms there is a population of solutions which compete with each other that's the difference actually i always say that in 1960s in around 16 when these evolutionary algorithms were introduced uh, like genetic algorithm it's i think everybody uh, who is in the area of uh, computer science or engineering must have heard of this name genetic algorithms very popular algorithm very successful most established algorithms in the category of nature inspired algorithms so genetic algorithm was introduced in 60s at that time Uh, when it was introduced in fact uh, the researchers were not able to adapt it they have a criticism for this algorithm that oh there is no mathematical background there is no mathematical proof there is no mathematical validity of the solution and therefore this algorithm is of no use but when uh, the computational power comes when the good computers started to begin uh, good speed computers are coming up then this genetic algorithm started to solve very difficult problems when it was introduced in 60s they used to solve only a dijon's test suit there were four very simple functions like a sphere function x1 square plus x2 square minimization of x1 square plus x2 square these kind of very simple functions used to solve initially um, this is called dijon's test suit so initially people started to solve those kind of problems using genetic algorithms and so of course there was a criticism also that it can solve okay very simple problems but since uh, there is no mathematical validity and therefore there is no mathematical guarantee of the solution so yes still the fact is true still it is true uh, but 
having after having so much good machines so much good computational efficiency we can <clears throat> solve very difficult problems which actually nowadays uh, seems infeasible to solve using traditional mathematical methods or if even traditional mathematical methods can solve a problem they take infeasible time may 100 years 20 years one year and that that in solve the solution becomes useless in that time and therefore these algorithms are able to give the solution of the problems which are earlier uh, considered uh, very difficult or infeasible to solve using traditional methods in very feasible time in feasible time but there is a catch here in giving this solution because nature inspired algorithms are again not the brahmastra are again not the brahmastra i want to say that there is a inherent drawback with these algorithms that these algorithms gives you the solution uh, but probabilistically the solutions are provided probabilistically means there is a probability of the correctness associated with the solution solution is not guaranteed to be the correct the 60s objection is still stands but actually what happens the reliability of the algorithms are quite high it is not 100 percent and it can never be 100 percent because all the nature inspired algorithms are actually based on the random numbers they are the intelligent random search they are the intelligent random search or the guided random search and therefore the reliability can never be 100 percent because the random numbers are not in our hand they are the computer generated random numbers right so uh, since uh, the reliability is not 100 percent but it is quite high for example it may be 99.99 percent kind of reliability is there and therefore when you are encountering with a problem which cannot be solved using any other algorithm then you have a good choice as a nature inspired algorithm which can solve the problem with 99.99 percent reliability so means these algorithms should be applied to the problems which otherwise cannot be solved using traditional methods so this is a uh, tagged warning with these algorithms that uh, the guarantee 100 percent guarantee mathematical guarantee cannot be given uh, for the solution but practically these algorithms are very much applicable and are becoming very popular because of having good computational devices and uh, very recently we have we have started working in covid 19 uh, prediction model also and uh, the initial results what we have is uh, actually very convincing also okay so uh, this i already mentioned uh, uh, that broad category of na nature inspired optimization algorithms the swarm intelligence since i'm the student of swarm intelligence so i'll explain more on swarm intelligence in this uh, talk in fact the talk title also is the swarm intelligence so let me just uh, uh, tell you that uh, where the swarm intelligence lies uh, the swarm intelligence is a kind of artificial intelligence actually actually the computational intelligence is a kind of artificial intelligence if you can see here if my cursor is uh, visible then this artificial intelligence is a broad term and the artificial intelligence in which the intelligence is obtained intelligence is immersed due to iterative computations due to iterative computations is the computational intelligence so when of course artificial intelligence so intelligence which is obtained artificially which is obtained uh, which is not natural intelligence so when this artificial intelligence is obtained by iterative computations iterative computations for example the artificial neural networks evolutionary algorithms like genetic algorithm swarm intelligence algorithm like particle swarm optimization algorithm deep learning all these kind of algorithms uh, where the computation makes a system intelligent are in the category of computational intelligence people used to call this as a soft computing also so you can use this word soft computing interchangeably actually uh, you know these word computational intelligence and soft computing uh, are uh, there is no specific definition of these because nowadays uh, the every uh, year you have a new 
um, application or new area of research in computational intelligence and therefore you cannot list the number of applications or number of techniques in the soft computing or in the computational intelligence so it's an open kind of area just you can say that intelligent system which is obtained by iterative computation by the computation is the computational intelligent system now when this iterative computation is based on cooperation also now i'm coming to the swarm intelligence when this iterative computation uh, look uh, <clears throat> we do the many, many kind of computation for example in genetic algorithm also we do the computation in artificial neural networks also we do the computation in swarm intelligence also we do the computation but in swarm intelligence the computation has a very specific property and the specific property is the cooperation that the a, in this a group of solutions a group of potential solutions or a population population of solutions work together in solidarity they work together they help each other the peer to peer learning they make themselves better through peer to peer learning means one learns from other and other one teaches to other also right so one everybody teaches to each other everybody everybody learns from each other right so peer to peer learning so they cooperate with each other means they share the information with each other so when this this computation is based on this information sharing strategy then that kind of computational intelligence is the swarm intelligence right there is a fundamental difference in the evolutionary computation and the swarm intelligence this should be very clear that genetic algorithm is not a swarm intelligence algorithm not at all particle swarm optimization algorithm is not at all a is not an uh, not uh, not an evolutionary algorithm not at all why because in evolutionary computation there are the operators there are the parameters there are the steps in which the population emerges the intelligence emerges through competition for example the we human beings suppose there is a uh, job in a company there is a job in company suppose 10 posts are there and suppose 100 people have applied there then there is a competition through competition we we defeat somebody else and then will win and then will become intelligent and then will get the job means emerge get the better position right so in the evolution we compete with each other darwinism theory right survival of the fittest whoever is the fit will survive so all the evolutionary algorithms are based on the darwinism principle survival of the fittest while the swarm intelligence algorithms are based on the cooperation so let me tell you very clearly categorically that evolutionary competition swarm intelligence cooperation competition cooperation competition versus competition competition versus uh, cooperation this is the basic major fundamental difference in the evolutionary algorithms and the swarm intelligence algorithms here is uh, the um, one formal definition of swarm intelligence now since i'm coming uh, close to the swarm intelligence uh, if you can see here this uh, just 10 second video that um, there is a group of words here on this tree and initially when all the birds started to fly in different different directions and yes now at the end every word has decided to fly in single direction in single direction so how they decided this single direction actually they have informed each other when majority of the birds started to fly in this direction then other birds informed that okay i'm going in this direction i'm going in this direction so other birds also decided to move in this direction so here you can see that because of this information sharing because of this sharing of the knowledge sharing of the knowledge about the potential next direction next step makes made all the birds intelligent in decide in in making decisions that we should move in this particular direction so you you must have noted that the birds initially were not knowing about the optimal direction that we need to move in this direction or in which direction so <clears throat> after few time after few iterations or after few uh, computational uh, you may in in terms of comp computer algorithm you may call it iterative computations or information sharing they decided that to move in this direction so this intelligence is emerged remember it this intelligence was uh, was not there uh, 
inherently among the birds when they were sitting on the on the tree when the birds were on the tree this intelligence was not inherent intelligence it is the emerged intelligence when they cooperate with each other and then they decided to move in this direction and therefore swarm intelligence is a emergent intelligence remember the first word is the it's an emergent intelligence it's an emergent intelligence another thing is it this intelligence emerges through the collective efforts it is not through single individual has not worked it is because of collective efforts all words have worked together and then a single particular direction is emerged so it's a collective intelligence it is emerged collective intelligence collective intelligence also very importantly that it is among a group of among a group this intelligence is always emer can emerge in a group it cannot emerge uh, between two three individuals for swarm intelligence you need a certain minimum number of agents and uh, i found that this minimum number of agents should be uh, experimentally i found that it should be 10 and theoretically i found that it should be 12 i did some mathematical analysis some mathematical derivation and then i found that minimum number of individuals uh, for swarm intelligence for having a good swarm intelligence behavior you need 12 and experimentally when i did some problems uh, i i solved the numerical test problems uh, using particle swarm optimization and other algorithms and then i found that the minimum individuals for having the swarm intelligence you need 10 members minimum 10 members right and it is good to have more members but as soon as more and more members will increase of course in the nature it's okay uh, they have uh, their own intelligence but uh, for implementing uh, those concepts to a computational device will become more computationally expensive means the algorithm will be slow so if you will keep on increasing the swarm size number of individuals in the group that is called the swarm size if you will keep on increasing the swarm size the computationally computational complexity will keep on increasing means the algorithm will become computationally expensive and remember we want to solve the problem in minimum possible time that's our that's our target we want to obtain the highest accuracy maximum accuracy in minimum possible time so that's the that's the two two contradictory statements i'm, I'm saying that we want more accuracy in minimum possible time and when, when whenever you will apply these algorithms to a to solve a problem you will find that if you want more accuracy the uh, if, if speed uh, the time taken by the algorithm will increase and if you want if you have given the less time in implementing the algorithm the accuracy will be compromised so but we want to develop an algorithm that's why the researchers throughout the world are working day and night uh, in developing new and new swarm intelligence algorithm which can give you uh, maximum uh, accuracy in minimum possible time and here i want to say that uh, the group of intelligence so uh, for normal problems for day-to-day uh, -day engineering optimization problems 30 to 50 swarm size is okay 10 is the minimum this doesn't mean that you keep 10 only right 10 is the minimum which may not give you the desired results right so for desired results it is to be customized by the user but uh, general recommendation is 30 to 50 swarm size is okay, okay. <clears throat> uh, here i have one uh, swarm intelligence uh, behavior video here the arms are there uh, so uh, actually through this video we can understand uh, the properties of the swarm intelligence that it's a self-organized system here you can see that the ants are working with each other there is no central control no no bee is guiding them they were offering their abilities from their own side nobody is dictating them right so it's a self-organized system without any control without any dictator uh, <clears throat> so here the same kind of system can be implemented to this these robots suppose this is a group of robots and the problem is to balance a platform suppose the problem is to balance this platform to find the optimal location so that this platform is balanced so this robot is doing now self organized system now it changes its position when this object comes similarly 
Uh, here the two robot two robots are there and then they they coordinate self coordinate without a dictator now they change their position and they they maintain so that this uh, platform is balanced so these kind of uh, this is a cooperation that all members are co are doing the cooperation with each other and solving the problem and problem solve what is the problem to balance the platform let me tell you the few uh, uh, well established and popular swarm intelligence algorithms let me very clear that there are thousands of these swarm intelligence algorithms exist right now in the literature all swarm intelligence need not to be the significantly different with each other the one first popular uh, uh, algorithm is this ant colony optimization algorithm which is developed by one um, italian scientist marco dorigo uh particle swarm optimization is another one so these two you may say that these are these two are the fundamental two algorithms in the swarm intelligence which are actually uh, made swarm intelligence so popular so efficient in for problem solving that people started to call uh, a separate category in the area of computational intelligence at the swarm intelligence because before 90s people uh, people were not using the uh we're not using the separate category for these two algorithms uh, for the for the swarm intelligence based algorithm before even 2000 before even 2000 people used to call those algorithms as the evolutionary algorithm if you see the papers uh of around 95 or 2000 uh, of particle swarm optimization or ant colony optimization uh, you will find that particle swarm optimization is an evolutionary algorithm nowadays nobody write that correct so <clears throat> now the third algorithm is this artificial bee colony algorithm which is inspired by the foraging behavior of honey bees karabo uh, is the person who uh, who developed this algorithm spider monkey optimization algorithm is the another algorithm which is which we developed myself my one um, co researcher from france maurice clark maurice clark is the person who is who has a significant work in particle swarm optimization you may say that in particle swarm optimization he is the number 4 person he did very significant work in particle swarm optimization so he is also one uh, co researcher here in this spider monkey optimization so myself maurice clark and my two phd student dr harish sharma and dr simpi singh jadhav and actually now they are passed out so they are the doctor now they have supervised many phd's so uh, the these we four people have developed this algorithm in 2014 and now it has become quite popular let me introduce just quickly a brief introduction of these algorithms also evolutionary algorithms i am not uh, uh, coming up but just let me quickly tell you the popular evolutionary algorithms uh, you well aware about this genetic algorithm genetic programming evolutionary algorithm evolutionary strategy cultural algorithm Uh, and differential evolution i am a fan of this algorithm differential evolution which is one of the most simple algorithm and very effective algorithm so if you want to solve a problem in minimum possible time and if you are not much uh, worried about the accuracy means accuracy you can uh, you can uh, afford a less accurate solution you can afford then differential evolution is the most suggested algorithm and it's a very very simple algorithm um, uh, also to understand i recently prepared a video lecture on this differential evolution implementation actually in the lecture i solved a numerical problem using differential evolution that how to solve step by step you can uh, explore that uh, to learn this differential evolution there of course i am preparing one for ant colony optimization also another uh, popular and, and recent algorithm in this category is this biogeography based optimization then simon one US, us scientist developed this algorithm uh, this is also becoming very popular nowadays because uh, it consists of all the uh, features of all the sorry sorry uh, all the features of genetic algorithm it consists of all the features of genetic algorithm plus something more right and therefore biogeography based optimization is superseding the genetic algorithm but still uh, actually the lot of resources and lot of variants of genetic algorithms are available and therefore genetic algorithms is still 
the most popular uh, uh, and uh, efficient algorithm uh, the working algorithm is there let me just quickly uh, introduce you the major inspiration and how the algorithms are developed swarm intelligence algorithms are developed so i'll discuss spider monkey optimization particle swarm optimization ant colony optimization and artificial bee colony algorithm for details uh, you may see the literature or you may any time you may write an email to me i'll i'll give you the details or i'll give you the resources of these algorithms also spider monkey optimization algorithm is inspired by the foraging behavior of monkeys of a special species which is called the spider monkeys nothing with the spider there is no uh, nothing with the spider spider monkey is a special category of monkeys uh, which when suspended with a tree branch uh, uh, with their tail they look like a spider and therefore their name is spider monkey right now this spider monkey why the spider monkey only why not the domestic monkeys why not other kind of monkeys actually these spider monkeys have a very specific kind of foraging behavior which i want to share with you what actually they do and this algorithm you will you will agree that this algorithm is uh, uh, a good algorithm can be developed based on uh, this behavior and <clears throat> and how intelligently they forage let me share with you there is a group of monkeys uh, by chance these photographs are of domestic monkey just from internet i took a photograph and put here just it's a just for notation purpose so it's a group of monkeys they live in a single habitat so they live in a colony actually 50 to 60 uh, size uh, monkeys live together so they live together in a in a group when in the morning they start foraging they they go to the food search food search they identify there is always a monkey who is the leader in this group who is the leader who is the dictator in this group who is the central control in this group now my this statement immediately looks uh, contradictory to my previous statement where i said that swarm intelligence has no central control no dictator no uh, leader but here in this spider monkey colony spider monkey family there is a leader and this leader is actually a designated leader in original in nature but i told you that these are the nature inspired algorithms the behavior is very complex natural behavior is very complex so we cannot consider all properties of the nature as it is so what we did what we did we have we also took in our algorithm also we took a leader concept but this leader is dynamic leader is not index based leader is not index based means means family clan it is not raja raja's son king son will become the king it's not like that what we did any solution any solution monkey is representing a solution in our algorithm so any solution who is the best solution which has the best function value out, out of all these is the leader right so i think now you understand that <clears throat> uh, those who have studied uh, particle swarm optimization can uh, can refer the g best so it is like g best anybody any solution who is the best solution is the leader right so it is the leader and we call it global leader we call it global leader now this group started food foraging in the morning and when they find and when they find the food source suppose this food source is obtained when they find the food source they <clears throat> start eating it and after some time at that particular location suppose there are 50 to 60 monkeys and it may not be possible to find a food source which has the food sufficient for 50 to 60 monkeys for continuously the full day right so after some time it may happen that for this this complete colony for this complete family this location is not suitable there is a scarcity of food not enough food now is available after some time suppose and in that case what these group of monkeys do they divide themselves into smaller groups they divide themselves into smaller groups like this this group and this group so now the entire big group divided into two smaller groups just to say just to search in different directions so this group goes in one direction and this group goes in another direction so that now you can imagine that when the all the monkeys were searching they were searching in a single direction or a single area of the forest 
now they divided themselves into two smaller groups so now they are searching in different areas of the forest it means now more area of the forest is explored that where is a good food source where the better food source available so they are searching uh, food in different directions suppose this direction and this direction they they move in different different directions now after dividing into smaller groups every small group will also have a monkey which is the best monkey so this monkey is again the leader and we call it local leader we call it local leader and here this is your global leader right so this is again a local leader uh, so there are two local leaders but what happens there is a one global leader which will join one of the local leader means one of the local leader is also the global leader right which is the best of all which is the best of all so one of the local leader is also the global leader now these smaller groups again start food foraging suppose they reach here this is a small group reach here and they start food eating food here after some time there may be a situation that again there is a food scarcity even for this small group then what they do they further divide themselves into smaller groups right like this they divide again in smaller groups and this process continues and dividing the larger group into smaller groups is called the fission this process is called the fission f i s s i o n fission right so this process is called the fission and this after in the evening what they do in the evening all the groups all the smaller smaller groups all the smaller smaller group again return to the same habitat same habitat or same tree wherever their family is living so they return at there so this process is called the fusion right they combine themselves in a single group or means they reach at the home it means they make themselves fusion uh, they make a fusion so throughout the day they are they were making the fusion and in the evening they were making a fusion and therefore this particular kind of foraging behavior is known as the fusion fusion social structure it's a fusion fusion social structure so based on this an algorithm is developed which is called spider monkey optimization algorithm or the fusion fusion social structure based algorithm so what we did in algorithm this not scarcity not enough food scarcity of food we defined as the solution is not improved actually uh, the natural phenomena is to is to be converted into the algorithmic terms so in algorithmic terms what we call this uh i already told the leader leader is the best solution uh, not enough food means the solution is not improved in computational iterative iterations in iterations in certain number of iterations if the solution is not improved we say that not enough food means the population is divided into two smaller groups right again this smaller group will have a leader means the best solution of this group and this again if this small group is not improved means this local leader is not improved it means then this this group is again divided into smaller parts and so on so this process continues continues until until the evening so how to define the evening evening means the maximum number of groups are formed actually the to total population size is fixed suppose 100 suppose the total total population size is 100 that is fixed so <clears throat> uh, if it is fixed uh, so maximum number of groups can be formed suppose the 10 groups are formed after having maximum number of groups they make a fusion they make a fusion means all the population members combine with each other so there is an algorithm based on this for more information on this uh, <clears throat> you can write an email to me there is a website of this algorithm all the resources are available there right now we have a change of server uh, of that website so it is not working in within uh, this week uh, the website will start working so you can check on monday uh, all the code papers everything is available there on the website particle swarm optimization is another algorithm which is inspired by the birds flocking behavior Uh, so how the birds uh, i already told you that they inform with each other so every uh, bird every bird inform its never right so this fish informs its never this fish is following this this fish is following this this fish is following this and, and this fish is following this and so on so ultimately they are making a swarm or they are making a school another algorithm is this uh, artificial bee colony algorithm which is inspired by the foraging behavior of honey bees uh 
actually honey bees has a very specific uh, kind of information sharing mechanism what they do whenever they return from the uh, flower whenever they return from the flower after collecting the nectar to the hive they unload the nectar to the one comb of the hive and then they inform to other bees that from which flower i am coming back so that other bees can minimize the time in search of the new food source so this is the computational efficiency this, this information sharing they can have the computational efficiency so this information sharing is done by different kind of dances actually they inform with each other like i'm informing whatever i know you inform me whatever you know so we also share information with each other and we all are becoming intelligent during this lockdown during this <clears throat> uh webinars right so we all are in uh, information sharing i'm a, i'm also attending many webinars i'm giving many webinars so it's a information sharing and we all are becoming intelligent similarly the honey bees also share information with each other and they become intelligent so how to share the information that i'm coming from this particular flower they perform a different kind of dance and this dance there are three kind of dances bagel dance tremble dance and round dance the most important dance is the waggle dance w a g g l e so waggle dance they perform the waggle dance in this waggle dance they always keep a certain direction of this dance this direction makes a certain angle sorry this direction makes a certain angle with the sun means they are performing the direct they they are performing the dance in this direction and this direction is making a certain angle with the sun and this angle gives you the direction of the flower so other bees can understand that the okay the flower is in this direction also the duration of the dance gives the amount of the food source there the speed of the dance shows that how far it is and by touching the antenna of this bee by other bees the other bees can understand that which kind of flower it is it means the bee through this dance can inform that the particular flower is in which direction how far it is how much nectar it has and which kind of flower it is so everything everything uh, every kind of information it is shared with uh, uh, with this kind of dance so of course since bees are uh, from centuries from uh, on this earth uh, that's why because of this intelligent intelligent behavior they are here this is a very uh, simple video here sorry uh, uh, on waggle dance, so, uh, here you can see that this is this bee is performing a waggle dance, and during this dance, they, and it it is not performed only at particular one location. It performs this dance at different different locations. Okay. Another popular algorithm is this foraging uh, behavior of ants, ant colony optimization. Uh, Marco Dorigo um, developed this algorithm. Uh, I tell you that this algorithm is very good for discrete optimization algorithms. Uh, actually, what happens? The ants have a very intelligent foraging behavior, so that they always find the shortest path from their nest. This is the nest, and this is the food source. So they always find the shortest path from the nest to the food source. So how they find the shortest path from the nest from nest to food source? For example, if I I need to go from uh, Delhi to US, I need the gps or i need some uh, some uh, mechanism to understand the path what is the shortest path i cannot because i cannot see the uh, usa from here if i can see the destination then of course i can i can find the shortest path but if i cannot see i need some gps mechanism similarly the ants cannot see the food source from here nest nest is still the, how they find the shortest path and the mechanism is very simple what they do let me tell you it's a very simple behavior and very intelligent behavior whenever they find any junction they choose out of these two path they choose any path randomly and during this movement they deposit a pheromone throughout the path and this pheromone has a property that it evaporates with time right so the longer path suppose this is the longer path suppose this is the longer path so this path will have more evaporation as compared to this shorter path right so out of many ants few ants will choose this also and few ants will choose this also so randomly means 50 50% chance if all the paths have equal probability 
so they they will 50% aunts will choose this path 50% aunts will choose this path again uh, at this junction 50% will choose this 50% choose this so overall the longer paths longer paths will have more evaporation and shorter path will have less evaporation means on the shorter paths the evaporation concentration will be uh, high and whenever the new aunt start whenever the new aunt starts from here it need to take care that which path next time whenever the, it takes uh, whenever it starts it needs to take care that which path has more concentration of pheromone that is to be chosen right so means that is to be preferred means more probability so these are this path are chosen based on a probability and there is a certain probability formula very soon i will i'll give the uh, numerical example solution of uh, using ant colony optimization also a video lecture i'll prepare this also so uh, they uh, they will choose this um, this path based on a probability and uh, after few iterations you will see that the evaporation on these longer paths will high and the concentration will disappear of the evaporation uh, of the pheromone on these paths and therefore more and more ants will keep on choosing only this path and ultimately this path will remain and all other longer paths will disappear so these alg this algorithm ant colony optimization algorithm can be utilized to solve the robotic path planning problems very efficiently for robotic path planning problems this algorithm is really very good very reliable okay so i am not um, discussing about uh, genetic algorithm and biogeography based optimization since i am running out of time uh, i just quickly share few success stories of the applications of swarm intelligence algorithm the very first is the swarm drone these days um, uh, uh, these days, uh, this drone swarm is becoming. This word is becoming very popular. Now it is. Uh, people are. Uh, you can see here that. Uh, look, uh, these are uh, thirty drones flying together, not colliding with each other. They are. They are actually information sharing with each other. All are connected with each other using certain topology. It is not a uh, fully connected structure. It's a less connected structure. It means all the all the um, drones are not informing to any other drone. What I want to say that this drone is informing to this drone or their nearby drones, other drones, but not to other drones. This drone is connected with this. So ultimately, the information of this drone will reach to this drone also via this drone, right? Via this drone, and uh, just for uh, keeping. Um, any kind of if any any particular single drone crashes just to keep this it is not uh, it is not a tree structure it is not a tree structure otherwise if this drone fails then all the drones connected with this structure will be uh, collapsed no no control over that so it is a less connected and less connected than fully connected structure and more connected than a tree structure so that uh, the computational cost can be minimized and there is some mechanism for the for any accident also or for any crash also here in india also we did uh, a successful experiments on the swarm drone we flown 14 together and uh, some very good swarm intelligence algorithm are developed and are being developed are being checked and practically also there is a practical photograph uh, where we flown 14 drones together Another good uh, successful story of nature inspired algorithm is this Japan's Enkensen, Japan's uh, bullet train, where this aerodynamic design of uh, nose shape design is developed by, <clears throat> uh, is developed using the genetic algorithm. And Japan Railways has uh, marked it that uh, genetic algorithm helped us in developing this. So I took this statement from Japan Railways website. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, what I want to say that uh, uh, the nature inspired algorithm has a lot of applications, a lot of potential in developing, in solving the problems. And of course, COVID-19 spread prediction can also be tackled with the help of uh, nature inspired algorithm. Particularly, I applied the swarm intelligence for this and relatively successful also. Here, the work is not published. It is under uh, revision under uh, review 
and that's why i'm not uh, putting the results of the spread prediction but uh, uh, how i i did this that i, I i'll share just quickly i'll share we have taken <clears throat> i hope everybody mathematical modeling since this is the workshop on mathematical modeling so most of us are already well aware about this sir seir and seirs models uh, most of the uh, uh, disease uh, which which spreads uh, infectious diseases can be modeled as first order or first order system of ordinary differential equations first order system of ordinary differential equations so first order uh, system of ordinary differential equations if we can model this sir model or seir model is also that system of ordinary differential equation sir means uh, su suspected in, uh, uh, infected and uh, recovered and this is exposed susceptible infected and recovered and this is exposed are those category uh, which uh, are which are not showing any symptoms of the uh, disease but they are actually uh, exposed to the disease right so for this covid 19 sir model is a better model what we did uh, let me share with you that uh, we have solved uh, using particle swarm optimization and uh, artificial b colony algorithm these two algorithms we applied in solving the system of ordinary differential equations right and the same kind of techniques we applied for uh, seir model <clears throat> okay so um, this work is with my phd student anshil gopal we applied abc and pso for the solution of uh, system of differential equations of course for the seir model but also we have solved the ode we have also solved the integral differential equations linear ode non linear ode we have solved using pso so just wants to share that uh, how we did it uh, i think we i'm just in next 2 3 minutes i'll i'll do it um, this is a uh, ordinary differential equation um, and uh, what we did this ordinary differential equation is uh, minimized is converted to an optimization problem so you you can write that like lyt minus fty equal to 0 so we did this so actually we want this we want this to be satisfied we need a solution this y1 y2 yn we need this solution so that this equation is satisfied subject to this condition so what we did we did this so what ideally what we want it to be zero the minimum value what we want equal to zero if it is not zero it is okay we we are happy with some error right so if it is close to zero we will be happy and we will say that it's a approximate solution and subject to this condition so it's a constraint optimization problem we converted it and then we converted it into an uh, unconstrained optimization problem but before before that model just quickly i tell you that uh, we took an approximate solution potential solution we define this solution to be this and which is the uh, <clears throat> combination of linear combination of uh, two radial basis functions gaussian and the sigmoid gaussian and the sigmoid so gaussian radial basis function and sigmoid radial basis functions we took and why we took this because they are infinitely differentiable so any number of times we want we have this differential operator here we can do the differentiation of these functions so finally we will have this approximate solution now we will put this approximate solution here in this and this and we will have this objective function we will have this objective function objective function and the uh, condition the constraint constraint is again put in the objective function constraint is put in the objective function uh i hope uh, those who have studied optimization may aware that this is a penalty function approach so this phi is a penalty right so it's a penalty function approach so through penalty function approach we have made this problem as an unconstrained optimization function a uh, unconstrained optimization problem right and we solve this problem with many numerical examples for example just i want to share few results it's a very simple ordinary differential equation but let me tell you it looks very simple but you need some mathematical formula and some mathematical theory to solve this equation but 
the solution using ABC or PSO, we don't need any kind of mathematical theory to solve this. And you can see here, this black is the exact solution and this red dots are the solution obtained by ABC. And this is solution obtained by PSO. And you can see that ABC is able to give you the exact solution, almost correct solution. And there is some error in PSO. Similarly, this is another example where again, ABC is more close to the exact solution. Here is the second order differential equation. So again, ABC is, has given the good solution, almost the correct solution. Again, <clears throat> and uh, again, this is nonlinear ODE. For nonlinear ODE is also, you can see that uh, the ABC is giving uh, almost uh, correct answer. Of course, the PSO is not that accurate. You can see here the PSO is not that accurate, but ABC is quite accurate. Of course, it is of clear also that ABC is a relatively a recent algorithm as compared to the PSO, right? And uh, um, the system of diff ordinary differential equations. So we have taken the system of two ODs, system of two ODs we have taken and we solved it. And we found that again, in this case also, ABC and PSO both are very good. Both are giving very good results, very convincing results. And therefore the same strategy we applied for the COVID-19 prediction model also, right? So this is the way how we can uh, predict uh, or we can solve the uh, SEIR model. Remember, uh, these, mod these algorithms don't use any kind of mathematical properties or any kind of mathematical uh, requirements. No mathematical analysis of the model is also required. It means whatever is complex the model is, these algorithms can solve it. This means you need not to relax the models. If you have a mathematical model and if you don't have any mathematical technique to solve, suppose some of traditional methods you don't have, then usually the researchers relax the model. So here using for using these algorithms, there is no need of relaxing the model. We can use uh, these models as it is. So that's all from my side. Similarly, another, another problem we have solved. Uh, so at last, I want to say that nature has enough inspiration to develop the algorithms. Uh, it is just a matter uh, that how we look at the nature. I say that best AI is CI. Best artificial intelligence is computational intelligence. Simultaneously, I also say that the best computational intelligence is the swarm intelligence. So I inspire researchers who work in this area of artificial intelligence or computational intelligence to explore the swarm intelligence, which has really a good potential for the problem solving. That's all from my side. Uh, thank you very much. I'm now open for um, the questions. If you have any questions, uh, please. Participants, you, any queries, if you have, you can get it clarified from the professor. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, there is a one problem. Uh, there is one question from my side, sir. Yeah. Uh, the what? Uh, how we can apply the ABC algorithm uh, for the uh, for the lifetime models, uh, like distributions, like distributional forms, uh, to apply to obtain the solution, optimal solution of the parameters. How we can get the uh, how can apply the ABC algorithms? Mm, uh, Dr. Manoj, uh, I cannot understand about the lifetime models. Uh, means any kind of optimization model. If you have an yeah, optimization yeah, yeah, model. Yeah, uh, actually, an optimization. Uh, one, one, uh, the question is that if I have a distribution, distribution that means I have a function, lifetime uh, distribution, have uh, some parameters, like a normal distribution. Normal distribution has two, two parameters. First one is the mean and the second one is the variance. Uh, the question is that how we can apply the ABC algorithm to obtain the solution of these uh, uh, parameters. Because we are getting through newton raphsons and uh, fixed point iteration method, all these method mathematically to solve. But I, I can apply the ABC algorithm for obtain the solution of the uh, equations. I got. I got your point. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, you have created a problem. Actually, uh, yes, sir. researchers. So that's a good, a good idea. Actually, uh, if you want to find out the optimal values of the parameters, suppose sigma and mu, 
using the yes. abc then you need to identify an objective also that what is the objective how mm. means what to maximize what to minimize how to uh, what is the objective so that uh, the parameters are to be adjusted if i say that the parameter is 1 and 2 then what is the yes. problem i say that it's okay but if 1 and 2 are not serving my purpose then what to what the purpose to be served right so for that purpose you need to define an objective function right okay. and in that objective function these sigma and mu are actually the parameters the independent yeah. variable and then okay. optimization problem can be solved using abc directly right so for okay. that actually abc need to be explained that how it is solved uh, okay. so if i have a chance next time uh, i can take an example how to solve the abc yes uh, yes sir it's so, a nice way so uh, you need to actually develop an optimization problem yeah. you need to develop an uh, objective function for that purpose yes. okay yeah. okay thank you sir thank, thank you, you i thank uh, you. i will i will uh, i will come i will communicate with you through mail sir okay. sure sure most welcome most welcome okay. uh anybody else participants dear participants anybody else would like to converse with the professor uh once once uh, more question sir uh, did you uh, some guide me about abc algorithm some references okay. related to abc okay. algorithm okay so uh, um, uh, for abc algorithm let me tell you that uh, there is no specific book book is not yes. there uh, okay. you need to rely on the research papers uh, okay. there is a research paper we all we have also written many research papers review papers on abc uh, okay. but uh, i think uh, you can just google about the karaboga k a r a b o g a karaboga uh, home page in that home page uh, there is a numerical example numerical yeah. example of abc is there in fact i yeah, sent uh, around 4 5 years before i sent this numerical example i i solved by hand a uh, numerical problem using abc and sent to karaboga so he put there and i also uh, can share that uh, uh, example with you to better understand abc okay. I, have, I can send it to you you can write to me and i'll i'll, I'll share on email that's not okay a, in fact if if uh, every all the participants want i can share with the coordinator also so that she can share with everybody i don't mind for that okay sir one participant has asked that can we apply this to biomathematics uh, so what kind of problem in biomathematics means any any optimization problem let me tell you any optimization problem whatever in area it is actually right now i you cannot name a single area of research single area of science medical uh, engineering um, even social science where these kind of algorithms have not been applied anywhere wherever you want the optimization you can apply these algorithms i want to quote i want to quote a one uh, by eiler eiler is a, a great mathematician so who quoted that there is nothing in the world which is not of something of which cannot be thought of something of minimization quote five thana sir timing kette irukranga quoterla uh can you hear me so Eiler Eiler said that there is nothing in the world which cannot be thought of something of minimization or maximization means you want to say that all the problems of the world can be modeled as an optimization problem so if you can model your problem as an optimization problem definitely these algorithms can solve your problem up to a certain level of accuracy also. we are participants uh, which parameter there is a question that which parameter uh, let me just open this question I mean, it is gone uh, on which parameters swarm size is dependent uh, yeah swarm size dependent upon the number of decision variables that's a good question actually uh, number of decision variables and the complexity of the problem that how many variables you have it's a 30 variable problem two variable problem or 50 variable problem or 1000 variable problem so if you will keep on increasing the decision variables the independent variables you need to increase the swarm size right but this is not a thumb rule let me tell you there i have only one example right now but most of the time it works this rule works there is a problem by grevenk uh, 
grievance optimization problem there is a problem grievance problem in which if you increase the number of decision variable complexity reduces most of the time in optimization problem you increase the decision variables complexity increases but in grievance problem you increase the decision variables complexity decreases so that's the only example where the where this rule doesn't apply but most of the time if you want to uh, uh when you want to increase the dis, uh, decision variables you have to increase the sum size also usually the sum size is equal to 10 multiplied the number of decision variables right but if the decision variables are suppose 500 then you cannot take 5000 uh, sum size of course then you need to uh, you need not to follow this formula but most of the time this 10 multiplied by decision variables equal to the sum size works uh there is another question sir can we apply this technique on multi objective optimization problems yeah multi objective optimization abc multi objective uh, pso multi objective ga everything is available yes they, they are very old around 20 years before people have developed the multi objective versions so yes for multi objective optimization they are very successful algorithms can you provide the materials books of different algorithms uh yes i can provide the materials for everything the book is not available for pso for smo i have written a book uh, mm, two years before i wrote a book so i can share the soft copy of that book uh, on pso and uh, on smo and for other algorithms i can share you the material uh, there is a very good book on pso by morris clark my friend morris clark who is the co-author of smo also he has written a very good book on pso i have a soft copy of that also so i can share that also so anybody who need those books you can write to me i'll, I'll share don't worry uh, in fact uh, all those uh, re related to smo all the materials will you will find on the website which will again live in next 2 3 days uh, because of the change of server uh, it is not working right now okay so if there is any other question please let me know mm. uh thank you so much everybody for writing good words for the presentation i uh, i was relatively i th i know that i i was very fast usually i um, i don't uh, speak that fast but uh, just in one hour i need to cover all those things so i was fast you can read those slides in comfort of your home i'll share the slides Thank you so much, sir. I thank the research person, Dr. Jagdish Chand Banzal, for sharing his knowledge with us through nature-inspired optimization algorithm. He explained how derived algorithms versus inspired algorithms, and also he has said nature-inspired algorithm gives ninety-nine point nine percent reliability. And no, also, sorry, sorry, Dr. Geeta, uh, means uh, I'm not saying I have not said that it, they gave it. means they can give up to that ah uh, ah uh, up to so, uh, right uh, up to up to i i just make a correction in that and also we could un understand that swarm intelligence is the subset of artificial intelligence and uh, professor has elaborated through a video how swarm intelligence is a collective behavior and also he has given a very simple algorithm as differential evolution and demonstrated spider monkey optimization with a very good example and uh, given a very uh, description of the concept fission uh, that was uh, explained in the example and he also pointed out that mathematical modeling of disease spread leads to a first order system of ordinary differential equation that was very fantastic and finally concluded that the best artificial intelligence is computational intelligence so we thank you so much sir for uh, 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 actually i'm sharing my email id uh, yes sir the chat itself i'm sharing so okay sir okay just feel free to write <clears throat> thank you for sharing your knowledge with us sir and spending your valuable time with us and uh, giving us inputs regarding this intelligence thank you thank, thank you, you so much sir thank, thank you, you so much sir thank you so much thank you everyone Dear participants, tomorrow uh, session timing will be four to five. Four to five.